Genesis chapter 2, we'll pick up reading in verse number 18, and we'll read down through verse number 24. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, uh, marriage by divine design, and we're going to take a look at, uh, if you will, uh, what's commonly referred to as the first uh, wedding ceremony or marriage ceremony. Now it's performed by God himself in the Garden of Eden. Uh, beloved, uh, I'm not going to share anything with you tonight that uh, is nothing new under the sun. I would like to thank and hope that everybody here tonight has this settled in their hearts. Uh, but beloved, there's a lot of confusion today uh, in our land and in this world about marriage. And uh, beloved, uh, when it comes uh, to uh, uh, a union, it should be between a man and a woman. Right. And I, beloved, I don't care what the Supreme Court rules. Right. I don't care what they do in other countries. Right. Uh, but the fact of the matter is, God has ordained that marriage should be between a man and a woman. And I hope that everybody has that uh, uh, nailed down and settled in their heart tonight. Uh, it's becoming increasingly popular and practiced, if you will, in our society and in the world that we live in where there's more homosexual unions being performed. Uh, beloved, uh, that is not a union in the sight of God. Uh, now, I, 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 I've seen a lot of different things, read a lot of different things, and... Uh, 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 people that practice this lifestyle, uh, the first thing that they run to and they cling to is God is love and God is a loving God. Yes, that is true. The Bible tells us that God is love. And we can say that we love Him. Why? Because He first loved us. But, you know, some of y'all may remember this gentleman and remember this saying, uh, a commentator, uh, very popular in the 80s and early 90s, uh, by the name of Paul Harvey. And Paul Harvey, uh, his logo on his commentary is, now let's hear the rest of the story. And the rest of the story is, is that yes, God is a loving God. God is a gracious God. God is a forgiving God. But God is also a God of judgment. Amen. And the Bible says, for the wages or the penalty or payment of sin is death. It's not talking about a physical death. It's talking about spiritual death. Now, beloved, if God's Word is forever settled in heaven, and Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever, God's view in regard to this lifestyle has not changed. It is still an abomination in His sight. And I don't care if it's becoming more practice, uh, practice today. I don't care if it's becoming more popular today. In the eyes of Almighty God, it is still sin today. And, uh, beloved, uh, uh, these people that think you can live this way uh, 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 and, and still go to heaven, uh, the Bible has, has, has uh, three words to say about that. Be not deceived. Uh, beloved, they're deceiving themselves right into hell. And the little g-god in this world has their eyes spiritually blinded to the truth of God's Word. Uh, beloved, there are some places uh, today that... Uh, uh, a man of God cannot go in and preach Romans chapter 1. He can't expound from that uh, because of how it addresses that particular lifestyle. Uh, but beloved, God has to change. Praise be to God. Amen. And, uh, you know, uh, I'm not going to sit there and beat that one cent up, if you will. Hey, listen, those that are out here living in fornication and committing adultery, let me tell you something. They're, uh, if, if they're practicing this lifestyle, they're living that way, and they think that they're going to go to heaven, and the book of Galatians says, be not deceived, they're going to die and go to hell in a heterosexual relationship because they're committing fornication and adultery. And so, beloved, uh, it's not just a homosexual lifestyle. Uh, beloved, it's a heterosexual sin as well. God's gift of sex is given to a man and a woman after they become married. Not before, but after. Amen. And, beloved, you don't hear that kind of preaching much anymore. Uh, you don't, don't hear that mentioned a lot and everything. And uh, I, I don't expect to get any invitations to preach on that anytime soon. Uh, but tonight, I want to try to remind you and help edify you because you're going to be confronted with this in conversation at work, in the break room, around the dinner table, because it is becoming more practiced, if you will, or, or becoming more noticed now because of social media and the news media. You're going to be confronted about that, and they're going to ask you, why do you believe that? You need to have an answer. You need to have an answer, amen. You need to know why you believe what you believe. Uh, I've asked people, why do you believe that for? Well, my grandfather believed that. Well, my grandma believed that. Listen, I'm sure your grandma and your grandpa were fine uh, grandparents. 
I'm sure there were fine people, but just because they believed it didn't make it right. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's what the Word of God has to say. Amen. And so Genesis chapter 2, let's pick up reading verse number 18. We'll talk about marriage by divine design tonight. Uh, Genesis chapter 2, verse number 18, the Word of God tells us, And the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him and help me for him. And out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. And Adam gave names to all cattle and to the fowl of the air and to every beast of the field. But for Adam there was not found an help meet for him. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam. And he slept and he took one of his ribs and closed up his flesh and stood thereof. Uh, Genesis is all the time called the book of first. Uh, we read a lot of first time things in the book of Genesis. We're reading about the first marriage ceremony. We just read about the first operational procedure to take place. God removed a rib out of Adam's side. How about that? Yeah. Uh, now, uh, now I'm, uh, I'm not going to argue this point. Whatever you believe about this is fine. Uh, some people want to debate, well, which rib was it? Uh, some theologi uh, the theologians, well, it was the rib closest to his heart. Hey, it very well may have been. Uh, but the fact of the matter is, I do know this much, God took a rib right. out of Amen. his side. Amen. Amen. Which one it was, really, in the grand scheme of things, is not relevant. Right. Other people like to argue about things like that. Right. And like, to, like to put their own two cents worth on our. We're just going to stick to what the Word of God says. Amen. Amen. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept and took one of his ribs and closed up uh, the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken for man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall a man uh, leave his father and mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh. Let's bow our heads and go to the Lord in prayer and ask uh, for the Lord to bless the reading of the scriptures tonight. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we are thankful for this time that you've allowed us to come to your house this evening to worship thee in spirit and truth. And Father, we are thankful for the many blessings that you've already freely bestowed upon each and every one of us today. Lord, we're so thankful for the very breath of life you've given us to enjoy thy creation. And Lord, we're thankful, dear Lord, for the health and ability to be in your house tonight, to come together as a body of believers to worship thee in spirit and truth. And Lord, we are thankful for your word and for the truth and instruction that we receive from thy word. And Father, now uh, uh, as we feast upon the bread of life tonight, Father, I pray that it would feed our spiritual souls. Uh, Father, I pray that all of us here tonight would learn something to help us in our daily walk with Thee and to be closer drawn unto Thee, Heavenly Father. And Lord, I ask and pray that You would help me tonight as I preach. Father, give me that anointing of the Holy Ghost to preach the truth in love and to preach with clarity of thought and clarity of speech. And Father, I ask and pray that You would strengthen my lungs and my voice to be able to declare Thy blessed Word tonight. And Lord, if there's one here that's in our midst this evening that's unsure or does not know Thee as Lord and Savior, Father, I pray that You convict, uh, convict their heart and that You draw them into Yourself tonight, dear Lord, that they come forward tonight and be saved before it's eternally too late. And Lord, we just thank You and praise You for what You've done. And Lord, we'll go ahead and thank, uh, thank You and praise You for what You're going to do. Because it's in the name that's above every name we ask and pray these things. In the name of Jesus, we do pray. And Amen. amen. And notice here as we read uh, this union between a man and a woman, that's the way God has ordained marriage should be, amen? amen. Uh, it's not, it's not uh, uh, Madam uh, uh, and Eve or Adam and Steve. It's between a man and a woman, amen? amen. amen. Uh, amen. Beloved, I know today that uh, uh, this uh, sodomite lifestyle is gaining some uh, traction, if you will, and gaining some uh, 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 notoriety, and it's obviously being practiced more. But, beloved, it's just like any other sinful practice that a person decides to, uh, to live. It's a choice. Yeah. They decide that they're going to live this way. Uh, I, I hear people say, oh, they just can't help it. They were born that way. Listen, we all were born sinners. Beloved, what sin you practice and what sin you do, you choose to do that. You make that choice to practice that or to do that. It's no different when it comes to, to murder or adultery or fornication. You make that decision. You're drawn away of that lust and that temptation. And you have to make a choice whether to abstain from it or to do it. But beloved, the choice is yours. Right. It all comes down to you. Amen. Amen. 
And notice here in Genesis chapter 5, verses 1 and 2 again. This is the book of the generations of Adam in the, uh, in the day that God created man. And the likeness of God made he him. Now notice verse number true to two. Male and female created he them and blessed them and called their name Adam in the day when they were created. Again, the reiteration upon male and female. That's the way the institution of marriage should be between a man and woman. And again in Ephesians chapter 5 verse number 31. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and shall be joined unto his wife and the two shall be one flesh. Uh, but that's why it's important when you uh, decide to enter into a relationship and you come to that point of decision making that this is who you want to spend eternity with. Uh, beloved, you better make sure it's according to God's plan and according to God's will. And first of all, it better be somebody of the opposite sex. And it better be someone on the same spiritual level of you. You better be sure that they're saved and be not unequally yoked with the unbeliever. Uh, beloved, uh, one, one of the, the, the major reasons that Christian marriages, and I use the word Christian in quotation marks, uh, beloved, is because of people being unequally yoked with unbelievers. Now, beloved, I know this with all my heart. I know that uh, with God all things are possible. I know that there's nothing too hard for the Lord. Uh, but the fact of the matter is, I've heard people say, well, preacher, I'm going to go ahead and enter into this relationship. I'm going to go ahead and be married to them. I'll, win them, I'll, I'll get them saved. I'll get them saved. Uh, beloved, I'm not saying that they won't get saved. But, beloved, you're not the one that does the saving. It's God that does the saving. And, beloved, there has to be that drawing of the Holy Spirit. They have to come to the Lord with a broken heart and contrite spirit, realizing that they're a sinner, that they're lost, and that they're sorry for their sin. And, beloved, the only way that type of conviction comes across is by the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Now, I know the Bible tells us of the women because of their chaste uh, conversation or because of their... Uh, uh, holy uh, behavior and the, and the words that come out of their mouth. Certainly they can be influential toward the husband and likewise. But let, let me tell you something. Why don't you just do it God's way and uh, let, uh, listen, if, if that person's lost, no matter what kind of feeling you have for them, uh, beloved, pray for their salvation of their soul. And beloved, if it's uh, meant to be to come together, they'll get saved at the appointed time. And then you can enter in together at, uh, at, 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 at a relationship and get married. Amen. Amen. But that's why there's such a high divorce rate today is because we simply don't do things the way God instructs. And you enter into a relationship knowing that that person's lost. Listen, there's two different belief systems. There's two different value systems. There's two different attitudes. There's two different natures, if you will. Listen, it just will not work out. It just will not work out. And so, beloved, it need to be equally yoked. And not, not only does that apply, I believe, when it comes to, to marriage. Uh, beloved, I wouldn't enter into a business relationship with somebody that uh, that's lost. Uh, let me tell you something. Uh, uh, you want to try to do things honest and ethical and be transparent. Somebody that's lost, uh, they may not have, they might be a moral person. But uh, a lost person, hey, hey, let's cheat this. Let's do that. Let's take advantage of this. And going to put you in some compromising situations. Right, right. Uh, it can harm your testimony. It can hurt your influence uh, for the name of Jesus Amen. Christ. Amen. So what's the thing to do? Just don't enter into it. Amen. Because no doubt the devil <laughs> certainly can use that device yeah. against the child of God. Can he not? And so, beloved, uh, as I mentioned, uh, 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 beloved, uh, I'm not going to stand up here per se and, 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 and preach on one particular sin, uh, homosexual sin. I'm going to give you some scriptures of what God has to say about that. It is still an abomination before the Lord. Uh, but beloved, uh, homosexual relationship, heterosexual relationship in, in regard to a sexual relationship, adultery, fornication. Let me tell you something. That sin as well. Uh, beloved, everybody wants to talk about one. Let's just get them all, amen. amen. Uh, yes, uh, you know, a lot of times we like to talk about the boat that's in a brother's eye yeah. when we got a beam in our own eye that needs right. to be addressed, amen. Right. Yep. Uh, Leviticus chapter 18, verse number 22, the Word of God tells us that I don't know, I don't know how much more plainer this can be, uh, but the, the Word of God tells us, Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is abomination. Romans chapter 1, verses 26 and 27. For this cause God gave them up into vile affections. For even their women 
did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another, men with men, working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was made. Hey, God said it was an abomination. God said it's wrong. Yeah. These people have changed the truth of God into a lie. Uh, beloved, it's still wrong. Uh, it's wrong today. It was wrong in the Old Testament. It's wrong today. And 2,000 years from now, it'll still be wrong. Amen. Uh, beloved, uh, uh, the Word of God tells us in Jude, verse number 7, we all know the story of Sodom and Gomorrah. And because of the lifestyle and because of uh, 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 this sin that was practiced, God brought judgment down upon Sodom and Gomorrah. Now, beloved, if God uh, rained judgment down upon them back in the Old Testament, let me ask you, let me ask you a question. God is no respecter of persons, and if Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever, and the wages of sin is death, uh, beloved, what would make a person believe today that they can live this way and that they're going to go to heaven? What 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 mentality is there in that? There's not any. What reasoning is there in that? What intellect is in that? There's none. They're simply deceived by the devil. They're deceived by the devil. It's just that simple. Uh, God is not a respecter of persons. God is a God of judgment. And beloved, let me tell you something. Uh, uh, our nation, I believe, is already experiencing the judgment of God already. Yeah. And beloved, uh, as the book of Isaiah records, now, uh, you know, there was still that remnant of Jewish people in the Old Testament in Israel. There was still that remnant that believed in the true and living God. And beloved, I, I honestly believe if it were not for the remnant tonight that were still here in America that assembled together and want to worship the Lord in spirit and truth and trust in the one true and living God, if it wasn't for that remnant still in America today, America would have experienced the full wrath of God already. Yeah. Amen. That's right. And beloved, you go back there and you read the times of judgment that's recorded in Scripture. You know, uh, Noah and the ark, everybody's familiar with that story. And beloved, when it was, uh, the time was appointed and Noah brought all the animals upon the ark and got his family on the ark and God said, now it's time for you to get on the ark, Noah. And God shut him in. God's people were spared, but the rest was judged. Yeah. And you think about Sodom and Gomorrah. That's right. Listen, unless the Word of God would not have recorded it, if I just had the Old Testament account about Lot, I would say Lot was in hell. Well, but the Bible records that Lot vexed his own righteous soul day to day, observing their deeds. Bless you, Lot was a saved man. Lot was able to get out and I think his daughters, of course, uh, there's a lesson to be learned about his wife. Yeah, she yeah. wanted to hang on. That's right. She wanted to look back. Yeah. Christ said, no man with his hands to the plow, uh, no man looking back with his hands to the plow is fit. What? For the kingdom of God. That's right. That's right. She looked back and we all know what happened to her. Yeah. She turned into a pillar of salt. That's true. That's true. But God's people was delivered out and then judgment came. Right. That's right, uh, beloved, uh, there are some people who think we're in the middle of the tribulation period right now. No. Hey, listen, we're in a time of tribulation, but we are not in the great tribulation. Right. Exactly right. But God's people is going to be raptured out and delivered before the great tribulation comes. Amen. Praise be to God for God's deliverance. Amen. Amen. That's a me another message in itself for another yeah. time. Amen. But Jude, verse number 7, only one chapter. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like, ma like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh are set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. God said, you know what? They're going to be an example. And if you continue on living this way, if you continue on practicing this, guess what's going to come your way? Judgment! It's going to come your way. And it will be recorded and laid for an example to you not to do this, to repent and ask for forgiveness. And turn from that wicked sin. Amen. Right. But no, we have it written yeah. and recorded for an example. That's right. So if that example is being left, guess what? Yeah. 
Judgment's coming again. Amen. That's what the Word of God indicates. And we know that's what's going to take place. In 2 Peter chapter 2, verses 6 and six through 9, the Word of God tells us, In turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them with an overthrow. Here we go again. Making them an example unto those that after should live ungodly. Hey, for the rest of y'all want to follow after them, this is what you've got to look forward to. <coughs> I'll leave that for an example and for a warning. How about that? Amen. Let's Amen. see. Amen. And deliver just what? Vest with the filthy conversation of the wicked. For that righteous man dwelling among them, and seeing and hearing, vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations and to rescue the unjust until the day of judgment to be punished. God said there's going to be another day of judgment, another time of punishment to come. Amen. And for those that say, oh, preacher, it's okay, I live this way. God loves everybody. I'm going to get into heaven. Don't you worry about preacher. Well, listen, I'm not worried about it because I trust in the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And I know whom I believe. Uh, beloved, I'm saved by the power of God and I'm kept by the power of God. Amen. Uh, but beloved, uh, if you're going to continue on living that way and not exercise any repentance and there's no contrition, there's no guilt, let me tell you something, you're deceived. Yeah. Well, well my, my Bible don't say that. Well, yeah. mine does. Right. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you something, I'm just going to stand on the Word of God. Amen. 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 I'm going to stand on the Word of God. Amen. And so, the pattern of marriage between a man and a woman the purity in marriage. Uh, beloved, uh, uh, young men and young women ought to keep their bodies pure Amen. Uh, until the time that they say, I do, and become husband and wife, and the, the two shall become one to enter in Amen. into any type of sexual activity. Right. Now let me tell you something. When you go through and you study, study sex in the Bible, if you will, the only time that God allows this and it's permissible is in the bonds of marriage. Amen. Anything that's practiced outside of marriage is sin. It's either in the form of fornication or adultery. One or the other. And so, beloved, the Bible tells us in Hebrews chapter 13, verse number 4, marriage is honorable in all and the bed undefiled. Sex, if you will, and we're all adults here tonight, so I can say this, but sex is a gift of God to a man and woman to enjoy in their relationship as husband and wife. Amen. Uh, beloved, Hollywood certainly doesn't portray it that way. Uh, the television certainly doesn't portray it that way. The internet doesn't portray it that way. Uh, beloved people today, the way they live, certainly don't portray it that way. And you go up and you try to talk to young teenagers today to keep their bodies pure and save themselves for that one that they're going to spend eternity, they literally will laugh at you and mock you and say, you're old-fashioned. No, I'm not old-fashioned. I'm just telling you what thus said the Lord declares. Amen. That's what the Word of God teaches. Amen. Amen. And so, if you want to say it's old-fashioned, I guess it's old-fashioned. God's an eternal God. He's been around for a long time. Amen. Amen. So I guess maybe in a sense that's true. It is old-fashioned. It's an eternal commandment. Amen. 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 Uh, marriage is honorable in all, and the bed undefiled. But notice this now. But whoremongers and adulterers, uh-oh, God will yeah. judge. Mm -hmm. You remember back over in the book of 1 Corinthians, there was some fornication going on in the church. And uh, the Apostle Paul said, you know, this needs to be addressed. There needs to be some church discipline. And he had a warning for those that were practicing that. He said what? Be not deceived. Those that are living this way and practicing this lifestyle shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Now, beloved, I don't know how much more plain that can be. Man, right. man, Christy, the other day, do y'all understand what I'm saying tonight? Well, I'm getting to wonder. I'm getting to wonder if I speak fluent English or not. This has happened to me about seven or eight times the last six or seven weeks. I went up and I've made a statement to someone about something or I've placed an order for something and I get everything but what I asked for. And I was at a place the other day and I said, I want two pounds of, of this particular product. Because green beans is what it was. I said, I want two pounds. The lady's reply was, well, you really need three pounds to get a mess. Well, that might be your opinion. 
You know? And I said, uh, I said, uh, let me have the bag. I said, I want two pounds of green beans. And so uh, I handed them to her. And she said, you only got a pound and a quarter. Well, I said, well, let me have a bag. I put a couple more hand pounds, uh, handfuls in there. And she said, you got it right on the dot. And I said, well, how much do I owe you? Because I've got a couple other uh, uh, things to produce. She said, that'll be $9. And I said, $9? I said, how much are them beans a pound anyway? She said, $2.50. She said, you got three pounds. <laughs> and I said, I didn't ask for three pounds. I said, I wanted you to tell me to stop at two. And she said, oh, well, she said, uh, well, I thought you said three pounds. I said, no, ma'am, you're the one that said three pounds. <laughs> I said, I wanted two pounds. And she said, well, you can put them back. And I'm like, no. I said, I'll go ahead and take them and everything. And so I handed her the, 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 the cash. And I looked over Christy, and I guess I, 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 guess I, I project really well. And I wasn't mad. I was aggravated, but I wasn't mad. And I looked over Christy, and I said, I'm going to start speaking Spanish. Everywhere I go, I'm going to start talking Spanish because evidently, the English that I speak, people don't understand it. And so I think she heard me because she turned around and she said, if you don't want them, you don't have to take three pounds. <laughs> I said, thank you, ma'am. Have a good day. And I told Chris, I said, we're out of here. We're done. <laughs> Sound like a mess. <laughs> yeah, there's always one in the crowd, isn't there? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> That's just everybody <laughs> But I, don't, I, I just don't know how much more plainer God can make it for us. Right. You know, right. Be not deceived. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you're practicing these lifestyles, yeah. ye shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Yeah. Now, I don't know how much more black and white you want it. Yeah. That's straightforward. Yeah. And they say a King James Bible is too hard to understand. If you can't understand that, there's deeper issues there. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, either you've got some kind of problem or you just simply don't want to understand it. Amen. And I think it's more the latter than it is the other. Yeah, I do believe. Amen. Uh, James chapter 4, verse number 4. You adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that friendship of the world is enmity with God, or the enemy of God? Uh, whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. And so Proverbs chapter 6, verses 23 through 29, talks about a strange woman. Now listen, I'm not saying that women in here are strange. I didn't say that. I'm talking about a strange woman. And you say, well, preacher, watch a strange woman. I better answer this very delicately and carefully, right? <laughs> Simply, when you read the, the scriptures and the Bible refers to a strange woman, it's talking about a woman that doesn't belong to you. That's right. In other words, it's your neighbor's woman, if you will. Somebody else's woman. That's right. And notice here in Proverbs chapter 6, verses 23 through 29. For the commandment is a lamp, and the law is light, and reproofs of instruction are the way of life, to keep thee from the evil woman, from the flattery of the tongue of a strange woman. Lust not after her beauty in thine heart, neither let her take thee with her eyelids. For by means of a whorish woman a man is bought to a piece of bread, and the adulteress will hunt for the precious life. Can a man take fire in his bosom, and his clothes not be burned? Can one go up on hot coals and his feet not be burned? In other words, you can't play with fire unless you what? Get burned. That's where it comes from. Amen. So he that goeth into his neighbor's wife, uh, so he that goeth into his neighbor's wife, neighbor's wife, whosoever toucheth her shall not be innocent. How about that? Now there's several other scriptures in regard to this. I'm just going to give you this one tonight. Uh, but uh, you play with fire, you're going to get burned. Amen. Now there ought to be one. Well, there ought to be one person that's mentioned in scripture. I'll come to your mind right now. Right, Read that portion of Scripture. Yeah. Dumb and said, David. <laughs> David tarried at Jerusalem. Right. Yeah. David stayed behind. David decides he's going to take a walk upon the rooftop of the mansion. Right. And he let his eyes wander. He said, uh-oh, there's a woman down there taking a bath. And because he's king, he's in authority, and because he was tempted and drawn away of his own lust, he sent for her, and his life was forever changed after that. He played with fire, and guess what? He got burned. Now, praise be to God for God's forgiveness. Go read Psalm chapter 51 about David's restoration. Beautiful psalm. A lot to be learned from Psalm 51. Thank God you can be forgiven. Thank God you can be forgiven. But you know what? 
If he would just done what right, can you imagine how his life would have been different? You know. And then last of all, the permanency of marriage. No, we'll stop right here tonight. Matthew chapter 19, verses 3 through 6. The Pharisees also came unto him, talking, talking about it, coming to Jesus Christ, tempting him and saying unto him, Is it lawful for a man to put away his wife for every cause? And he answered and said unto them, Have you not read that he which made them at the beginning made them, uh oh, here it is, male and female? Amen. Nothing's changed, has it? 4,000 years went by. Still male and female, isn't it? Guess what? It's still that way today. Amen. And he said, For this cause shall a man leave uh, father and mother and shall cleave to his wife, and the twain shall be one flesh. You know, sounds like we've read those words before. You know why they're congruent? You know why they're the same? Because it's the same author. Yes. It's just that simple. It's the same author. Right. Uh, Wherefore, they are no more twain but one flesh. Yeah. Now notice the permanency here. What therefore God hath joined together, let no man put asunder. You know, today you got people get married, they don't last two days, and they're already calling for an annulment and a divorce. You know, some people don't make it 30 days, some people don't make it 30 minutes. <laughs> you know, you look at the ones that, uh, uh, the married couples within our church, uh, Frank and Sue, uh, going on, they're just celebrating 59 years. Mom and Dad, 63 years. Six. How much? 66, I was trying to use some credit. Uh, <laughs> I was trying to say he looked a little bit younger. All right, so 66 years. Uh, Mark and Amy, how long have y'all been married? 27. 27. How about you, Brother David? 46. 46. Amen. Amen. 46. Me and Christy going on. Uh, boy, I better get this one right. <laughs> 27. Yeah, going on 27 years. That's close enough, man. <laughs> and so, you know... Uh, uh, beloved, uh, God has designed permanency for the marriage. Amen. That's right. You know. That's right. Now listen, uh, a former pastor of mine, God love his heart, he's with the Lord now. He made this statement. He said, whenever couples come to me for counseling, whenever they come to me for counseling, he said, I never mentioned the D word. Yeah. He said, I never mentioned divorce. Now he said, sometimes <clears throat> we'll talk about murder. But he said, we won't talk about divorce. <laughs> now, he said that lightheartedly in humor yeah. and everything, so don't, don't take that to heart. <laughs> but uh, he said, don't ever mention the D word because once you, once you mention it, that means you're already thinking about it right. and you've already started traveling down that path. Yeah. And so, beloved, uh, I hope the message tonight has been a blessing to you. Nothing new under the sun, just a reminder about some things the way God has ordained them that they should be. Amen. And so at this time, uh, we'll stop right here. And the musicians will make their way over to the instruments. I'd like for everybody to stand, please. Everyone standing. Everyone's heads bowed. Everyone's eyes closed. I'll ask a question here tonight. Maybe there's someone here this evening and the Holy Spirit of God has spoken to your heart and you're here tonight and you've never been saved or you're not for sure heaven will be your home for eternity.